Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, November 18th, 2013. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, are TSA detention pods coming to an airport near you? Then, documents confirm police access to real-time DHS cameras. And even Slick Willie wants you to keep your health plan. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Oh, how you doing? I'm your friend, you know. <laughs> I love you, Harlem. I love black people. Uh, I'm going to bomb Serbia. It's liberal. Well, just to ensure that you are totally conditioned and ready to obey absolute authority, the TSA is now rolling out new detention pods. Another example of just how we are being treated like prisoners in our free country, travelers are now being forced to bottleneck through these detention pods as they leave the airport terminal. A robotic voice gives instructions to wait inside the pod until a green light is shown and then the door opens. Once travelers exit the pods, they are unable to re-enter the terminal. Now, the justification for installing the pods is that they replace police or security guards who would normally stand at the exit therefore saving money. But we know that that is a bunch of baloney because the TSA admits in its own words that there is no real threat. What this whole thing is all about is just absolute acclimation, brainwashing, conditioning, so that you'll be okay with groping hands of the TSA and total authoritarian control. There are no terrorists. We reported last month um, engineer and blogger John Corbett that he's had ongoing litigation over the constitutionality of the TSA security practices, and he exposed how the TSA admits that there is no evidence to support giving up our civil liberties. A section that was censored reads of what evidence the government possesses to rationalize that we should be so afraid of non-metallic explosives being brought aboard flights. The answer, there is none. As of mid-2011, terrorist threat groups present in the homeland are not known to be actively plotting against civil aviation targets or airports. Instead, their focus is on fundraising, recruiting, and propagandizing. And in fact, he said it's been about 35 years since an actual situation where someone was trying to bring explosives into the airport has actually even occurred. So the threat is not real. So why are they imposing these security measures? Don't you feel like every day we're just being pushed and prodded a little bit more into compliance? Something's definitely up. And then we also reported in October about the TSA's expanded screening process and how before you even get to the airport, they're already accessing private and government databases to, to get information about you, like your car registration, your employment, and so much more. But now, just to remind you that you are a prisoner who has got to be subjected to these detention pods and you must obey and control. But what about the obvious thing here? We saw it during the LAX shooting, um, in order to avoid gunfire, hundreds of people were stampeding for the exit. So what's gonna happen if something like that happens or if there's a fire or some other threat and people need to stampede to the exit, that's gonna cause an obvious bottleneck, obvious problems, but also, why do you have to be subjected to a detention pod to leave the terminal? Haven't you already gone through enough TSA checkpoints? By then, you're, I mean, you're, you're exiting the plane. But the TSA isn't the only agency that's tracking your every move, of course. Last week, we told you about the expansive mesh network surveillance grid that's in Seattle. And the police there, there said, oh, you know, we just forgot to turn the cameras off, but we weren't really actually using them. Well, now we had just reported on a new file that's entitled the Police Video Diagram. And this proves that police officers have the ability to access and control live video feed from the city's surveillance cameras, all from the comfort of their police cruisers. So these cameras that track your cell phone, and then provide up to your last 1,000 locations and are the ultimate profiling tool, cops now they don't even need probable cause to track you. They don't need a warrant, they don't need permission. 
Um, basically, they can just decide that they want to see what you're up to and then turn these surveillance cameras so that they will um, track you and the police can find out what they want to know. And a Seattle police spokesperson said after we exposed those documents last week, they would begin deactivating the program awaiting public feedback. But reports as of yesterday show that the cameras are actually fully operating. And I'm sure they're not going to give up the authority to sur surveil the public in that way. I just, I don't believe it. And multiple agencies have access to these surveillance cameras, but what I'm curious about is who has access to the cameras that are spying on you through your Xbox? The new Xbox One set to be released later this week can see your penis. That's the shocking discovery made by Fast Company Design's Mark Wilson. After uploading a video analysis of the new console's features, Wilson wrote, quote, While I'd intended to post the above tech demo of the improved Kinect from Microsoft Research, I noticed alongside the intricacies of a hoodie and jeans, and there's no graceful way to say this, a dong. That's right, the Kinect system's infrared camera is now so sensitive that similar to a TSA millimeter wave body scanner, it shows a clear outline of your genitalia. Wilson also reveals his embarrassment in noticing how the system picked up the outline of his own penis during Xbox One testing at Microsoft's campus in Redmond. Taken on its own, this might be easy to dismiss, but when you consider the fact that Microsoft, maker of the Xbox, was deeply embroiled in the NSA wiretapping scandal, allowing the snooping agency backdoor access to spy on users of its services, things begin to get unsettling. The user will not be able to power on the new Xbox One without first enabling Kinect and standing in front of its camera. The system also requires that it be connected to the internet at least once every 24 hours. The device will also track your eye movements to record which ads you watch, as well as using its array of microphones to enable voice interactivity and distinguish your voice from other people in the room. So I guess we just have to trust that Microsoft won't record and pass on the audio of our conversations to the NSA, just like it did with the data of other individuals who used its Microsoft services. Reports have emerged today that Nambler, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, have put in a massive pre-order for the new Xbox One, exhausting current supply. Okay, that's a joke, but you see where I'm heading. Wilson himself notes that whereas Microsoft, aware that children could be targeted by paedophiles, have banned topics or content of a sexual nature on its gamer tags and profiles, they don't seem to be as concerned about the fact that their console has the capability to perform a rudimentary strip search of all its users. Check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash prisonplanet. I'm Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com. And if having cameras everywhere and the police being able to track your every move through your cell phones wasn't enough to remind you that you are a captive living here in the United States, now the law enforcement uh, ankle bracelets that you see, the GPS ankle bracelets, they also have built-in phones to transmit audio. An attorney uh, filed a motion to have his client's ankle device removed when he noticed that it was remotely being turned on during their private meetings. During the court hearing, he placed a GPS ankle bracelet on the podium and made a call from the device to a technician of the Secure Alert company, that they're the ones that manage the audio. So the technician testified through the GPS bracelet as it was on the podium that yes, the device can in fact be turned on without a warning and record and transmit audio. But you might be thinking, oh, you're a criminal. You don't have the expectation of privacy, but whatever happened to um, innocent until proven guilty? And it is America. We do still have attorney-client privileges. So this is actually kind of shocking and a little bit scary that they can tap into your private conversations with your attorney without warning you. Well, stick around because coming up next, I'm going to have the latest dire warning from doctors regarding something that you're probably letting your kids do every day. We'll be right back.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. 